Earlier this week, while Jensen Wang was asking people to clap because he has friends, the professional, the professional voice actor happens to be a good friend of mine, Roland Bush, who happens to be the CEO of Siemens. I was actually receiving a pretty big leak from one of my Intel sources. And so, despite all of the NVIDIA news this week, that is going to be the main focus of this video, Arrow Lake. But I would be remiss if I didn't take a few minutes here to touch on what I thought about the Blackwell announcement from NVIDIA at GTC. And so let's get into it. And the first thing I would, of course, point out to the people watching this video, and the majority of you are usually gamers interested in hardware, is that this is like A100, not like GA102. This thing that Jensen showed off is the non-gaming variants of Blackwell that you shouldn't really draw any huge conclusions on regarding to how much better at gaming the gaming versions of Blackwell will be compared to their predecessors. Well, besides concluding that if NVIDIA ever feels like they need to, they will spend as much money as it takes to be able to brag about having the biggest chips. And yeah, I mean, this thing is big. It's hilariously bigger and faster than Hopper, which means it will be a lot faster than AMD's MI300. But all right, this is when someone would probably jump in and say, but who cares, right? This thing's not launching right now. Uh, Blackwell is going to be more of an MI400X competitor, not an MI300X competitor, right? Well, and here's where things get interesting, actually. According to the industry veterans that I spoke with behind the scenes, as I was putting my opinions together about Blackwell, the answer to that question, what Blackwell will compete with, when it comes to if it's MI300X, the answer is, a bit of yes and actually a bit of no. You see, I, I haven't been given an okay to quote anyone directly on this part here, but the consensus is, and I think I'm safe to say it, is that MI300X so far has had paltry supply. I mean, AMD announced MI300, their hopper killer in 2022 as a 2023 product. And then in 2023 said it would be coming out in the second half of the year. And we're being honest, didn't even really paper launch it until the very end of 2023, basically 2024, according to the people I've spoken with. And so already that's going to get me to the major point of this part of the video. You know, I could dwell on how big the numbers are for Blackwell, but the fact of the matter is, is that AI is a newer segment in computing that has outside performance increases happening every generation. We've seen this before with many other things in the past. So yeah, I am sure it has bigger numbers than Hopper. They're absurdly huge. And you know, I'm sure MI400X will have much bigger numbers than MI300X. And we shouldn't rule out the idea that it might be able to be competitive with Blackwell. But it will only be competitive with Blackwell, AMD, if you actually launch it in time to compete with Blackwell. I'm sure MI300X would have been a huge winner if it launched in the middle of last year, like I believe AMD kind of wanted. But it hasn't really launched until, at least based on what I'm told, pretty much now. And so while it will have its time in the sun, I think this summer will be a time where MI300X sells decently well if they actually start supplying it in decent numbers. The fact of the matter is that they need MI400X out as soon as possible. In fact, I would say, AMD, you need to get MI400X out by the end of this year or maybe quarter one 2025 at the earliest, or it's not even going to be a Blackwell competitor. It's going to be a Vera Rubin competitor, according to what I'm hearing. And yeah, I got some more information in my last round of information requests to my sources that I want to put this quote on screen now for you. So this is from somebody at NVIDIA that tells me that they believe AMD is doing everything it can to accelerate the release of MI400X so they can attempt to remain competitive in AI in 2025. Even still, according to in people who work at NVIDIA and what they're projecting, they do not think AMD will have MI400X ready enough until quarter one 2025 at the earliest. And that means they do believe it will end up competing with Ruben, almost entirely missing the ability to directly compete with Blackwell for the majority of its life. And yep, that is right. This person affirmed it. Vera Rubin is now launching by mid-2025. They are pulling it up and accelerating its release, and they're even hoping to get it out in the first half of 2025, right next to MI400X, or maybe before it, if possible. However, it must be noted that Rubin is like Hopper or Volta. It isn't really meant for gaming. Don't think that this means that NVIDIA is launching a whole new gaming generation like half a year after they launch Blackwell. That's not the idea here. No, it's meant to bury the competition, and this this is a direct quote, so deep that they don't have any oxygen left to compete in AI. 
for years. And so there you go, AMD. You've been warned. NVIDIA knows that you kind of dropped the ball with MI300X, and they know that you're aware that you need to get MI400X out as fast as possible. And they don't want to give you any room to breathe. That Blackwell will be coming out this year, and then less than a year after that, apparently, Vero Rubin is launching as a hopper-like AI monster once again. And so, well, AMD, you've been warned. Do not let MI400X slip. But speaking of release dates that are slipping, Arrow Lake. I have pictures of it that have a few surprises in them, and I want to show you them. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Are you getting desperate looking for decent prices on the latest tech? Don't look in the neighbor's yard. Check out AliExpress. This piece of content is brought to you by AliExpress. AliExpress is a feather everyone should have in their online shopping cap to find competitive prices on clothing, gadgets, and do-it-yourself computer parts like this new Maxon RX 588GB, which I tested it, and this card that you can get for around $90 after using code ALLONAE is, despite its age, honestly, not a bad budget card compared to what else is out there in its price range in terms of raw rasterization you basically have to pay 50 percent more to get something actually better than this and half of the time they won't have at least eight gigabytes of ram and so i actually do think it's a solid option you can find it competitively priced at aliexpress and also there is this ugreen 35 watt gan fast charger it's also a great gadget you can find there as well that can charge two devices quickly and again, it is competitively priced at AliExpress, where you can find better choice and better price. So don't miss them, and don't miss your chance to support Moore's Law is Dead during their March 18th through March 27th sale. Clicking on the link in the description helps the channel a ton, and using the offer code ALL on AE helps the channel, in addition to saving you $20 on orders over $100. And so support the channel and save yourself some money at AliExpress today. All right, so let's talk about Intel Aerolake. Now, for those who missed the most recent Broken Silicon with Tim from Hardware Unboxed, which I recommend you check it out. I think it was one of the better episodes of that podcast, if I may say so myself. But in that episode, I decided to actually leak something that I had received information on a couple days before recording with Tim. It's technically not something really entirely new or different from what I've been saying about Arrow Lake's release date for a while, but it did come from an additional person that backed up everyone else who had told me something similar to this up until now, and that was that Arrow Lake was hoping to go through qualification in October of this year, and typically you don't get to a product launch until about one to three months after qualification. What that means is that Intel will honestly be lucky to launch Arrow Lake in quarter four of this year. And if it was any other product, most people would be saying you should expect a December paper launch. Now, personally, I think Intel will somehow try to pull off a paper launch in October or November, but I really wouldn't expect high availability of it until, honestly, 2025. And because of that, because it is launching, therefore, firmly after Zen 5 launches and requiring you to buy a new platform, it's really going to have its work cut out for it turning heads against something that's been out for a while on an established platform and likely for a cheaper price because well zen 5 for most at least of the consumer variants will be using 4 nanometer whereas intel as this channel leaked a year ago will be using a 3 nanometer node that costs more but it is a more advanced node at least right so does intel have enough silicon to brute force their way to victory because they're using a more advanced node well let's take a look at it shall we so we put this on screen here what you are looking at is arrow lake and specifically from what i am told this is arrow lake h the extreme laptop edition of arrow lake where you can see they have compared to what's out right now with meteor lake a larger cpu tile and and that they've shifted down the soc tile that at least based on the napkin math i did does look to be about the same die size as the soc tile of meteor lake meaning that i do believe this likely shares the exact same soc tile that meteor lake used and so yeah to fit a longer and bigger cpu tile and probably still using the same io tile as meteor lake as well what they did is they have a smaller graphics tile they've shifted it down with the io tile and then well i'm actually told that they have two dummy dies on the side just to fill out the rest of the empty space 
which actually let me switch to this picture here where I have made it more about just making it more obvious what each tile is. And then after several rounds of talks with sources after receiving this picture, this is what at least I am told these tiles should be. Again, there it is, the giant compute tile, the SOC tile that was moved farther across to fit the compute tile, and the graphics tile was shrunk a bit for allowing that room. And again, this is the extreme variant that will presumably be paired with dedicated GPUs and laptops. So a smaller graphics tile makes a lot of sense. And then again, I think probably the same IO tile that Meteor Lake uses. And then two dummy dies to fill in extra space there. Unfortunately, I was hoping it was some other new surprise thing, but at least in this example, from what I've seen, these are dummy tiles. And so, yeah, what do I think of all of this? Well, as far as I can tell, the CPU compute tile here in Arrow Lake H, which should be the same CPU compute tile that will be used on desktop Arrow Lake, by the way, it seems to be in the same ballpark of total die size as two Zen 5 CPU CCDs put together. Or honestly, the two Zen 5 CCDs in total may be a bit bigger than this compute tile in total die size, meaning that I'm not seeing a big, at least die size advantage here. And, and well, Intel is using a more advanced node, it's not actually that much more advanced. They're using N3B. This is not a more advanced version of three nanometer. And, and AMD may actually be using more silicon of, well, it is less advanced. A lot of people just call it a cheaper version of TSMC's N3B, by the way. So what I'm seeing here is Intel has a better node, but they don't really have more silicon. They may even have less. And that node isn't even that much better. So it's obvious to me that, well, number one, Intel probably bought up a node from TSMC that maybe they should have put more thought into when they bought it up years ahead of time. And now they're just probably forced to use this node. But at the same time, I have to say, if Intel succeeds, if Intel Arrow Lake manages to just outright beat Zen 5 at everything, it is going to be because Intel managed to make Lion Cove actually a good architecture they will not be winning just because they bought more of the most advanced silicon you can buy i don't see that as a huge advantage here and, and don't forget this is very different than the conclusion i came to that ended up very accurate when i analyzed the silicon being used by nvidia with lovelace versus amd with rdna3 it did spell out that lovelace yeah it should be as powerful as it was and it did end up doing that the sound i'm seeing here with arrow lake it has enough silicon to be competitive with AMD, but yeah, I would just put it this way. For now, the evidence I am seeing suggests that they will probably be of similar performance, Zen 5 and Arrow Lake, with one being a bit better at some things and the other being a bit better at others, but costing a lot more to produce, unfortunately. And so, well, it'll be interesting to see if Intel will be able to make this competitive because, again, from what I'm seeing here, it's not obvious it really will be better despite launching later. All right, well, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to ring the bell button after subscribing to Moore's Law is Dead on YouTube. Subscribing to this channel helps a lot. And of course, also like this video, you know, comment below, share it as much as you can, and consider joining Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. Uh, we're always putting out new exclusive die shrink videos that never have any ads. Another one will be coming out this week only to patrons. You only need to have the $2 tier to get that and get access to the Discord and discuss this video with me and the thousands of patrons out there that would love to have a civilized discussion with you. But no matter what, if you made it this far, thank you for watching.